So we have our fragments here. Got my lab notebook. This is our PCR from when we did the PCR worksheet of how we combined everything, the PCR program we used on the thermocycler, our gel and the imaging picture. Um, it's written down many things like it being 1% gel and, and how long and the date and everything like that. So we recorded that information, but now what we need to do is clean the DNA fragments out of the gel. So we're following the Minilute protocol. It's a Minilute handbook. There's a kit down here in the 310 fridge. Okay, so we have the DNA fragment. We're going to weigh an empty tube and weigh a tube with the fragment in it and compare the difference and see how much um, media we need to add to it. Okay, zero grams. The tubes are roughly the same. Actually, they're not. It's roughly the same, though. So we've got 0.2 gram, 0 0.02 grams, so in other words, 20 milligrams in here. 30 milligrams in the other and again this isn't something that has to be completely precise and, and they, we may even have a little bit more than that but our zero was a bit high because we had some solution left in this too. So if that's the case we'll say for example it says at 300 microliters of QG here's our QG buffer Make, and I've made sure well this one still has some crystals in it any buffers that we use do not have crystals in it, this one's good. If it does have crystals, we'll stick it in a um, 37 degree incubator and just leave it in there for a few hours till it warms up and the crystals in. We need to shake it occasionally and the crystals will go away. That's what we've done with this one actually because it was sitting in a box for quite some time. So this one we've already taken out of the incubator. And it says we need 300 microliters of the QG to each 100 milligrams of gel. We do not have 100 milligrams. I'm going to add 300 microliters anyway. and It dissolves the, the gel really well and it works just fine having extra buffer. So, Okay, so I'm adding 300 microliters. H2. And one. Now I do need to change tips mostly for the buffer. I don't want to contaminate the next person's use. Okay. Incubate at 50 degrees for 10 minutes. We've incubated these for 10 minutes, right? They're, the gel fragments are, are all dissolved and it's at 50 degrees. The, uh, we've also added water. Even though this is a dry block, we've added water into these wells. Not to overflow to short up the circuitry of the dry block, but just enough to sit in here to, cause, to create a little water bath, essentially, that these tubes are floating in, okay? We have these, the gel uh, uh, blocks in solution now. So it says, important is that the color should be the same as the buffer when we added it. It looks pretty much the same. It's not off color. And if it was, then we'd add some sodium acetate. This looked, I mean, similar colors. This is just a small sample of it. I'll add one gel volume of isopropanol. So in our case, we're going to add it about 60 milligrams. 60 microliters, excuse me. So they're saying here, if you added 100 milligrams of, if the agro slice is 100 milligrams, add 100 microliters of isopropanol. We, ours wasn't that big, but we're going to add about 60, just to be sure. And here's a isopropanol up on the shelf for the class. Always change tips before you use it. So I'm adding these to the Here, okay, still a good color. One more. Okay, this goes back in the PWS rack here. So now we have the isopropanol added to both. 
place in a mini loop column. The mini loop columns are in this uh, in this box. And for each gel slice, I'm going to label them. I need about 500 or so. If I make a mistake around here, along this method, for example, if I didn't get isopropanol on the bow from the one, I would expect that we would only get DNA to precipitate, and we'll know in just a few minutes whether I did it right or not. The problem is, if I didn't do it right, you've got to go back to the PCR, make a gel, cut it out, and then you're back to the step again, essentially starting over. Find the DNA centrifuge for a minute. There is the on switch. Lid. Okay. I usually put the tabs always in the same position so that the hinges, I mean, are at the top of the, that are pointing upwards. Use both knobs, cinch that down good, and uh, we're going to do this at, it doesn't really say, so max speed is fine, and just for a minute. So if we do QC buffer is going all the way through, and the DNA should be stuck on this membrane right here in the bottom of the column. Actually, this is a good waste receptacle, but you'll have to remember to clean it out when you're done. You can sometimes people will dump them in the trash, and it makes their smelly garbage after a while. So there is the column, this lavender, lilac, whatever you want to call it. And there's also the collection tube, which is the bottom part. Okay, so we've emptied out that, placing the same collection tube, 500 microliters of the QG. So we're just adding 500 more to the top. I can only guess that this is to make sure there aren't any gel pieces stuck on the on the membrane. Okay. Now we've done. Now we spin again for a minute. And I'm loading these things so that the samples are in exactly opposite from each other and they're balanced because they're essentially the same tube with the same volume in it. Okay. Close this, make sure it's latched, and hit start. Okay, so this is done spinning. Once again, 500 microliters is down at the bottom. Okay, pour off the excess or the flow through, as it's called. We wash with 750 microliters of PE. Let's put this on the shelf. Now I'm checking that this PE has ethanol added. This one does not yet. Um, this is the first use of it. For you guys during class, it should have ethanol added to it. One way to check is smell. No, no ethanol. So we need to add, before use, add 220 mils of ethanol. I've set the dial at 750 microliters. We've added ethanol to the PE buffer. I shook it vigorously to mix. Now I'm adding this wash buffer, as it 
sometimes called the cones. Take these and we spin again for a minute. So we spun with the ethanol for the PE buffer. Once again, we discard the flow through. So what the book means is that we put in 750. It's still, it's beneath where the lilac column reaches, but occasionally just pulling it out and things, and of the centrifuge you might tip it and get, uh, get some of the PE buffer up back into the column. So what they re request or instruct users to do is to, after dumping out the PE buffer, the wash buffer, that we centrifuge again for one minute to dry the column completely. Alright, so we spun it for a minute. The column should be very dry. Now we need to place the Minilute into a clean 1.5 mil micro centrifuge tube and add 10 microliters of EE buffer to E-loop. And there's a whole bunch of other things that you could, can read on your own in the protocol, but that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I found some these lilac or rose-colored tubes here. When you get tubes out, make sure you're wearing gloves. What we need to do first, we've labeled the columns, but we need to label the tubes. Because once this is done, we essentially throw the column away, because we get the DNA off the column. And uh, if we forget which is which, easy thing to do, and you may not be able to remember which sample is in which has been eluded into which tube, but now we can. So now when you get the EB buffer, we need 10. So I don't want to touch the filter, I just want to put it right on top. Okay, there's that one. So one of the most important parts of this protocol is to, uh, well, it doesn't matter, it, yeah, try not to touch the membrane, but one of the most important parts is now waiting a minute. We need to give time for the DNA to solubilize into that 10 microliters of water. It's not a whole lot of water. Um, it's enough, but it just needs some time. Uh, the book recommends letting it stand for a minute. Um, a couple minutes isn't bad either. A minute is sufficient, but uh, if you happen to forget the time or whatever and want to wait an extra minute as you time it, then uh, that's fine too. I don't like to put them into the wait in the minute in the centrifuge for the entire minute because you know you don't want that water to just to go to one edge of the membrane, but it's been enough time that you know I can load the samples in. Yeah, it's been a minute completed now. And essentially the water is still hydrolyzing the DNA. So I've put the caps facing this way. Um, they should be fine there. Occasionally they'll break off, but we'll cross our fingers. Okay. We'll let it centrifuge for a minute, and then we have our DNA. Once we have this DNA, we're going to quantify it. Now you guys have already seen how to do the nano drop, so you'll use the nano drop to quantify the DNA and measure the amounts that are there. Once you have quantified the DNA, then we use that value to calculate how much to include in our ligation reaction. And then you do the ligation, then you do transformations. 